Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Okay. I think everybody knows what this bad boy is. This is the Cheech Leech, but it's in a little tiny format. This is a size 4 Gamakatsu V10S front hook. And this one that I'm holding has a size 4 back hook, but I actually like the size 6 for the back hook better. So this is the mini Cheech Leech. So, you know, arguably one of the most effective streamer patterns that we fished over the last several years. Um, now in a miniature format. Now the trick with this was getting the marabou proportionate because on the big one you just wrapped marabou around the shank, called it good. But this stuff we had to get a little bit techy on it. So we'll just show you how to tie it. Um, I've got again the size 6 24 61 in the vise. I've got uh, some 140 denier uh, Danville yellow um, in this uh, fly time machine here. It's a really nice bobbin, you know. Is it ridiculously overpriced and expensive? Absolutely, but it is the best bobbin that I've used. So, I mean, if you're into that kind of stuff, then good for you. You should try one out. Anyway, I'm just gonna dress the, the whole hook. Uh, I've seen a lot of Cheech leeches tied where they've got a marabou tail. And that's that's fine, but the idea behind the Cheech Leech is the back half is 100% synthetic. Uh, it moves a little bit better in the water if, if the front half has natural fibers and the back half doesn't. So I'm using crawdad colored semi seal. So on the meg or on the big uh, Cheech Leech, I use mega semi seal, but on this one, I'm just using regular size semi seal. So again, this is the crawdad color. And I'm going to tie in a tail that's roughly the length of the hook here. And I will double that back over. Alright, so for the flash on this one, I'm using midge flash, but this has kind of been my favorite color lately, it's just gold. So this is gold metallic midge flash. Take about three strands of it and tie a chunk on each side of this tail. Just by tying it in like this with these uh, going out the front of the hook and just pull those over on the other side. And then I'll cut those just barely longer than the tail. Um, the other cool thing that we have gotten our hands on just recently is small sized Palmer chenille. So you can see this is per perfectly proportionate for this size of Cheech Leech. If you use the other stuff, again it looks good but it kind of just it, it overpowers that the hook gap. So we're just going to tie in this uh, small size, this is tan colored. And as you can see, I'm putting a big bulge in the back of this fly. That's fine because we're going to build a body of, uh, of semi seal here. So once I'm to here, I'm actually going to build a dubbing loop. But one one trick to dubbing loops, that if you don't want to break them, is double them up. So I'm wrapping that twice around this dubbing loop. And then I'll close that in. So you can see I've got two strands of thread on this dubbing loop. And it's... I mean, once it, the fly is tied, it's probably not going to make it any more durable, but your chances of the, the loop breaking as you wrap it forward are a lot smaller. I use my uh, gator grip tool just with the shepherd's loop in it. The cool thing about this shepherd's loop is it's extended. Um, so you can see there's this little leg kicking off the front of this, this shepherd's loop. And that's so that when you're wrapping the, the loop forward, it, it's a lot more metal for that loop to slide off of and you don't have loops that come, that get loose on you. So anyway, I'm just gonna build up a loop. Don't get it too thick, it'll, it'll bind up on its own. So as you can see, I've got a pretty even dubbing loop. And this, for this not being a barb or a, 
a ball bearing dubbing twister. It really twists for a long time. So got it fairly twisted up. You can see the fibers are matted down quite a bit. So I'm just going to take my Velcro and brush it out. And then I'm going to use the rotary feature to wrap that forward. And I'm not going to wrap every wrap right in front of itself. I'm going to do a little bit of spacing there. Well, it all just kind of depends on how bushy you want this to be. So I'm going to go about to there, right up to the eye, trap the loop, and tie it off. So in this step you will trap down fibers and I'm not going to use the the rotary for this because I just I want to kind of wiggle it a little bit more. So once you've got that tied in, I'm not going to brush it out quite yet. It does look pretty messy right here. I'm going to tie some more midge flash in over the top of the fly. Three strands again, just tie it in right in the middle of that clump. And then I'll pull the additional strands over and tie that in. And then whip finish it. So once I've got that head cemented a bit, I'm just going to take a piece of Velcro, like this brush and comb tool, and really brush out the body. Oh, oops. Got to trim this too. So these pieces of flash, I'm going to trim down so that they're the same length as everything else. Maybe a little longer. And doubling up on your dubbing loop for this really will help so that none, none of these fibers pull out either. So it should be pretty locked in. Looks like I'm creasing some of this flash, that's all right. That's basically it. Now, if you wanna take this fly and fish it just like this, that's fine. I call this the back half and it fishes really well. So anyway, that's uh, that's the back half of the, uh, the mini Cheech Leech. The front half is on a Gamakatsu B10S size 4. So you can see that even though this that it's uh, one size longer, the shank length on this is roughly the same size as a size 6 2461. Alright. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to tie in the eyes. So this is the medium size ball's eyes and I really like this eye because when you're making the head on the Cheech Leech they're pretty wide eyes so it's, re it's easy to wrap stuff in between those. So I'm just going to get it started and then rotate those on the bottom side of the hook shank. I do like the Cheech Leech to ride hook point down. So once you get that all put into place, I'm going to super glue that in place with the Wopsy Z-Mint. Wopsy actually uh, worked with the people at Zap, uh, like the people who make Zappa Gap, and they made this glue specifically for fly tires. It's kind of a consistency right between the thick Zappa Gap and the thin Zappa Gap. It's really good stuff. Um, can take some articulation wire now just tie it in so it goes over the front of the the hook just a little bit and we're going to tie this down so that it briefly or just barely starts to take go down the bend of the hook it wants to roll to the side on me so if you see me tie 
uh, articulated flies. I like to tie it down the bend just a little bit because it prevents the back half from hooking or fouling on itself so much. So from here, I'm going to use an orange articulation bead, just one of them, and then attach this on just like you would any other articulated fly. And I, I don't want to pull that so tight that the, the loop from the back fly is right up to the bead. I want to leave plenty of room there so that it has you know, room to swing back and forth. So once I have that tied in, I'm just going to trim off the extra wire and make it easier for me to go up the hook shank. So I'm going to go up right behind the eyes, fold these back, and just really get that tied down. And I'm going to add just a little bit of super glue to this as well. All right, so minor change, and this is how I do all my cheech leeches now, but I'm gonna take some semi-seal and I'm actually gonna put a tail on the front section too. Um, that's just gonna just make the junction between front and back hook look a little bit more natural. Natural to us anyway, the fish probably don't care. Okay, so I've got the back half or the back or the front tail tied in and I'm just gonna kind of veil those fibers over and fold those back on top of the, the other ones. Alright, so and now the the front half up to about right here ish right behind the eyes a little space behind the eyes is going to be exactly the same as the back half without the midge flash <laughs> turtleneck and a beret so I can use this tool no, just kidding this is the Petitjean magic tool a lot of people use it with CDC and stuff and I never really thought to use this with a cheech leech until our uh, good buddy his feather flingness Brandon told us to or he told me I should try the mini cheech leech with this so it actually works pretty cool so basically what I'm going to do is, if I were to take this piece of marabou and palmer that on cheech leech, it would be way too long. So I need to shorten it up. And there's really no easy way to do that. So if I take it and put it in the magic tool, got both of those stems lined up for the most part. i got to try that again. Okay, so our stems are lined up and I'm just going to push those down into the magic tool. And it, it'll lock it in place like this. Now if I take my comb and kind of brush those fibers out, it, they'll, they'll line up even better. You can see that that marabou is mixed up really nice. Now I'm going to take this part of the tool and I'm just going to kind of slide in here and grab what I want just a little bit with my fingers to make sure that those stems aren't pushed down in there. So I've, I've got the marabou that I want. Holy crap. Midge flash. Not cool. Jeez. I just want my scissors. So I'm just going to take that, cut the stems off. And now these feathers are still a little bit too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take and pull these out. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So 
So I'm going to hold that up to my cheech leech. Maybe a little bit shorter even. So once I got the, I've got the length, and I'm, I'm measuring length from here to the tips. This stuff's going to get either cut off or bound up in the dubbing loop that I'm going to put them in. So I'll just get rid of those chunks. So yeah, it's a lot of effort to get your marabou ready, but it really is worth it in this fly. And it, it helps your fly to move really well too. Okay, so once we have that marabou prepared, this one, you know, I probably don't need to double up my dubbing loop, but it, it's good to kind of keep it short so you can control your loop a little bit better. As I'm only going to put in roughly, you know, that much uh, feather. Losing my train of thought here. All right, so I'm going to lock down that loop and advance my thread right behind those eyes. And with my tool in place, what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to shove that whole clip into that loop like this. And then as I back it out, that thread will just snap right down right where I need to, to put it. Now, one of the things that I've done several times is I, I release the clip and then I, I clamp it back down. And I've even done it on video before, and it it pulls a bunch of the marabou out, so or whatever I'm clamping down. So I'm actually going to pinch that with my fingers, and then spin my gator grip tool, and just let that start to loop out. Okay, so we've got fibers going everywhere. And I got my fancy comb. I'll just use that. So, got it brushed out. You can see not many of those fibers matted down at all. So, marabou is a, a pretty simple material to work with, really. Okay, so once I have it like that, give it one more brush through. And then I'm just going to moisten my fingers and pull those fibers back. So as you can see, it actually wraps up a lot cleaner than the original Cheech Leech if you've got the marabou on the stem. So once I have that all tied in, I'm going to give some security wraps right at the butts of those feathers and then I'll brush all that marabou out. And even though it's still slightly moist, it brushes out really nice. So you can see that now we've got a fairly proportionate marabou collar that matches up with the cheech leech really well. And I just use tan and yellow for that. Um, for the legs, I usually use three legs, so you could just use one or two legs per side. I'm going to put two in, and I've just got silicone flutter legs in tan. And this color is super cool because it's pretty translucent. Curtis, that means you can see through them somewhat. So I'm going to tie two in on one side. And then I'm going to take these, go under the shank of the hook, and pull them up on the other side of the eye. So now I've got legs on both sides. And I'm going to trim those legs so they're roughly as long as the marabou. Alright, so now time for the head. This is another part that's, that can be fairly tricky, but it's, you know, it, it took me tying this and the El Sculpito fur for a long, long time before I really f dialed in a good way to do it. So I'm going to double up my, my loop again. And my loop's going to be pretty long for this one because I'm going to do a sparse loop that's just longer. 
and I make the loop right in front of those eyes. The only reason I do it that way is because it's a lot easier to form the loop as opposed to deal with all these rubber legs and marabou and crap. So with your dubbing twister in, and these legs are gonna give me fits, but that's all right. So my dubbing twister's placed in, and I'm gonna make another dubbing loop, a little bit more sparse than normal, but not, not too much. And as you can see, I'm trying to keep the fibers all facing the same direction. So if I have a clump of dubbing like this, I, I pinch it and pull fibers out of that dubbing. And then you can go through and go all Bob Ross into your dubbing loop and make happy little places. <laughs> all right. So now I would same thing, I'm just gonna start twisting my loop up and grab the rubber leg in it. So there I am, twisted up. I'm gonna take my Velcro brush and brush this out pretty well. And this one is a little bit more critical to get brushed out because I want a pretty thin core as I wrap this around the eyes. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come underneath that eye, the eye closest me, and start a, a wrap be, behind the eyes. So just about like that. Sometimes I do two, but this is a pretty burly loop. Then what I'm gonna do is as I come over the front, let's see, that's a good angle right there. I'm gonna go around that eye like that. And then back over the top and brush it out. And then I'm gonna do the same thing around this eye closest to me. And if at any point your dubbing loop's gonna slip off those eyes, it's gonna be right now. So I'm gonna pull it pretty tight, and then I've got it in front of the eyes, and I'm just gonna give it two to three to four wraps, depending on how the old Cheech Leech is feeling. That looks good right there. Whoa. So I'm gonna tie off my loop just with one wrap on top and then several wraps in front. And I'll try to corral all those fibers that got loose on me. Okay. So, it's all right if I got a few fibers hanging out in front. It's a streamer. And I can burn them off if I want to. Okay, so I'll just take the whip finisher Finish up my head. And then the final step is just to brush out that head. And we already had it brushed out pretty well, so it shouldn't take a lot of doing to get this head brushed out. But anyway, that's it. That's the mini Cheech Leech. You know, obviously there are a whole bunch of different colors you can do this in, but um, this kind of crawdad goldish yellowish color is really really good swims great what else uh, that's about it so there you have it tie them up fish them we know they work <laughs>